one. Hello, Hello everyone, and welcome to the Ladies Tale Podcast. Yes, I got to be. Oh my word, that just happened. Go ahead. See, no you, y'all know that I literally got out. Yes, I got to be her. And it was like, oh, professional just died. Professional. She was professional. What? I was, what? Like, I can't, we can't even claim it now. Like, we were, I was excited. Like, we were professional. We were the show name. No, no, and no, then no, I was no. going to say my name was Jade and she's Lona. And life was going to be so good. And then, did you say that? Come on, double high five COVID style? I don't. Social I, 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 can't, I can't do it with you. Like, you just belt like in the middle of an introduction. Like, come on. Like, Excuse you, by the way, because you didn't oh, say excuse, excuse me. me. So now you're belching and don't have manners. That's that's terrible. I hope that your dad is watching this right now. Oh no, I hope not either. Oh no, it's gonna be hilarious because he's gonna like stop this, you at the I door and be like, "You see, when you belch on camera, you have to say you have home training." I can't wait for it. I can't wait for you. Anyway, this is what called canceling. Why are you right putting, here, Why are you counseling me? You can't tell me too much talking. We wrote books. I mean, we wrote literary life guides and pop poetry. Sometimes, y'all, we have something wise to say. Or, or is it us. just our narrator that's making us sound words? Ooh. It's probably just our narrator. Okay, it is. And I thought, why don't you say it like it's a freaking haunted house? I can't with you, woman. Well, okay, okay we're we're going to talk about haunted house. Why are you distracting me? I was getting for my professional voice. The books that we have written are. And I thought the books were bad with other life classes. And I thought being grown up was easy. If only I would meet a memoir and verse. All of those are. They were no. by somebody that, wait, excuse me, that we love and we love very dearly. And then we have the Warhawks, Hawkins, Wither Webs, and Widow's Death. That's six. If you want yeah. to do the other 11, Good which equals 17. 17. Uh, you can find out everything the ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. By the way, that was professional. But you're not here to hear about us because I can talk about me and how adorable I am all day. Please but- do. <laughs> you're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful, wonderful guests. guests. Would you like to introduce yourself? Selves with an S. Okay. Well, I am Joe Sands. I am an audiobook narrator. I've narrated several books for you ladies. Thank you so much. I'm very humbled. And um, what else do I do? I am the host of the Joe Show podcast, um, courtesy of you ladies as well. So that has been amazing. And do you know, Saturday, the night will be one year. So I'm super excited about that. I really um, thought so. I was, I was excited. I was like, I think it's a year since Joe. Also, I am um, you you share a love of coffee with me, Joe. Tell them about it. Oh, I absolutely adore coffee. I inhale coffee. Like, yes. matter of fact, I just had an, I think it was my third cup. So I, I probably need to slow down. But, uh, but yeah. do you? Okay. And Thank Jimmy? You. Say that. You're supposed to say what? You're supposed to say my name. Well, well, okay. So random person next to Joe? <laughs> That's taller than Joe. <laughs> well, yes, I'm uh, Jimmy Taylor. I am a professional basketball player, and I also run a business called JLT3 Enterprise, and um, and also you know some things like I love to fish, and I outside of um, fishing, I love to listen to jazz and R and B. That's like a lot, that's a, a lot of my like downtime therapeutic sessions. I'm listening. To. R&B okay. jazz. We have to talk about jazz, though. Why? Wow. Yeah. Are you 62 and we don't know it? I mean, because if you are, I'm using you to get like a uh, single Coffee. coffees now. Don't, don't even understand. It's, it's real. <laughs> Being 62. Uh, yeah. I mean, my, my, I, I think my soul, yeah, like, I, like I'm young. You're oh. the old soul. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I was just like. Right. I'm old soul. Right, right, yes, right. Though. Like, I like okay. old school, old jazz, like that. There won't be any like Marvin Gaye. Wow, yeah, yeah. I, I Not me. And in, in the gym, I'm about to die. I need all the motivation I can get. I need as much somebody thump as I can possibly get. No, oh, I, I, understand. I understand that very, very much. So, okay. um, I have a question. Has your old soul and maturity helped you at all in your chosen profession? And what is that profession? I mean, you said it was played again. Mm. Yeah, so my maturity when it comes to my profession, you know, it, it, it helps me, you know, negotiate deals and make sure that um, I don't get myself into any type of funky deals because every international 
you know, contract for, per se is not, you know, it's not the best opportunity. Yes, we I want as many opportunities that I can get, but like I said, every opportunity isn't, you know, the best one. So I just have to make sure that um, I keep a level head and don't get too excited over the fact that it's a contract and make sure that it's a legit deal that can help me move forward in my career. So I guess in that aspect, my maturity has helped me um, in that in that way when it comes to my profession. What's so maybe I should maybe I should start listening to jazz so I can negotiate all these big contracts. Yo, maybe it's the jazz. I, think I think that's the secret to your key. Yeah, yeah, it's the jazz music. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. So again, <laughs> what is your profession? Because you said uh, you have several different ones. No, I, no, I just play professional basketball. Oh. And, yeah. But I played, but I said, but I played international. Like I played in Croatia, and I played in uh, Romania, which were two very lovely uh, countries and uh, two good. Um, there were two good uh, opportunities to to be in to play and things like that. And where I go next, you know, it's still undecided, but you know, it's still a couple of places in the mix and stuff being negotiated. Okay, so here comes it. Yeah, he's being so modest. So not only do you play basketball professionally internationally he also started his own 501c3 um jlt3 basketball where the plan is to continue to um do workshops because he does a lot of training during off season and um, he does a lot of one-on-one -on -one elite pro basketball training and workshops and he sponsors kids to be able to play in recreational leagues so he's just modest he doesn't like to talk about himself so I, well, yeah. I can understand that. I can mm -hmm. definitely understand that. So I, I just wanted to say, um, the, the, does the modesty have anything to do with you, Joe? Did, did you teach modesty or something? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Well, um, like, I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You know, we're just very helpful, philanthropic, creative people. And it's, we kind of, I don't know, him with his athletic career and being in sports for as long as he has, it's, you know, his optimism, his outlook on life. Um, it's all been kind of structured and tailored around um, these various activities. So he's, he's a pretty good kid. I, I, I call him a kid. He's still my baby, but he's, he's a great young man. You know, he's, he's a great young man. And um, he, goes through a lot there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes um the his work ethic the training i mean just the whole creative process mm -hmm. between what i do on my side and what he does on the athletic side it's actually very similar as far as some of the things that we have to go through wow. so he he motivates me to be better um hopefully i motivate him a little bit more <laughs> but um it's it's we balance each other out. We we really do. We really do. That's amazing. So now for some unprofessional questions. Was it cold in Croatia? Croatia, blah, blah, blah. Croatia and Romania. Yeah, yeah. It, in the wintertime, it did. It, it got really, really, really cold. And Croatia got more colder. Well, I guess more cold than uh, Romania did because we didn't get much snow in Romania. But Croatia the the snow was ridiculous like it was I mean, it was probably almost up to my knees and i'm six foot four so you can imagine how high that snow was but, so i can't i can't even go outside then you know i'm four foot nothing so. <laughs> no right. is inside until, until spring comes all right so no, actually no. and then the no. other unprofessional question comes so what are the best ways to deal with snow like what are some of the best clothing that you can put on to deal with such cold weather? Because yes, I need to know all of these things because I'm always cold. Mm, well, I would say you would have to wear multiple layers of clothes, some type of boots that would be sturdy because like, it, according to where you're walking, the, the ground can be slippery. Like on, on fresh snow, you'll be good because fresh snow is not, not slippery. But like after a day or two, when it's done, kind of melted away and, and that water turns into ice, mm -hmm. yeah, then it gets kind of tricky of trying to, you know, walk um, on that ice. But uh, but yeah, multiple layers of clothing, long trench coats, scarves, hats, um, any type of earmuffs that you can put on, some gloves, 
thick socks. Like I was like you couldn't like you couldn't tell what color I was. That's just how covered up I was. Like mass, like I, I just looked like a figure walking, <laughs> like walking, like you wouldn't know what what I was. That's just how covered up I was trying You're to like be. Facade. Right, exactly. Just like about the I think I think the fact I think the fact that your back covered up told us what, what color you were. <laughs> 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 or, or you came from like you came from like a sunny place. Like I get that. Right. I told you. All right, Joe, you were saying, Joe. Well, the the fascinating thing about when he gets to travel internationally, he sends me all these pictures and and tells me about all these experiences. So it's the next best thing to being there. And so there was this cave that they had to go and practice in. When where were you? Were you in? Tra they were in Transylvania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh... This this past season we went to we went to a cave. It was like two hundred meters or something, some something like that underground. Like it was it was a very very deep cave. It was a uh, it was unexpected to me because I was not expecting to go to a cave to go practice basketball. Like who who goes to a cave to practice basketball? <laughs> but but yeah, we we went to a cave. It was like a salt like a salt mine cave, and the whole purpose was which of what they told us that. It'll, it'll help with our breathing, breathing the salt off the, the walls of the mine and stuff like that. But yeah, we were 300 something. It was, we were, we were very deep and it was cold because I was covered up down there trying to figure out why am I in a cave? Like, <laughs> but it, it was like something like off of Van Helsing. He was like, mom, right. this is like something off of Van Helsing. Like if you ever watch Van Helsing when they're in the Great Hall of Dancing, he was like, and I was like, did you did you see any vampires? Did, did anybody come out? He's like, uh no, no. I feel like they would be able to get through his layers of clothes. Okay, yep. like I feel right. like that would have been impossible. They'd be like, "That's cotton. That's cotton." So more right. cotton. Like I was, I was standing very close to the stairwell because all I kept doing was looking up, and kept thinking about if this cave starts to collapse, <laughs> I got to be the first one out of here because I don't, I don't have caves. I, I don't. Agree. I, you and Winona well, must share like a whole like second. Okay. Like, because I've heard okay. this story about this cave. And I said, uh, I hope he practiced close to the stairs and let everybody else run drills. And they'd be like, right. I'm sorry you died, but you should have been closer to the stairs. Thank you. Somebody got to live to tell the story. They ain't finna be no right. Somebody got to live to tell the story. And I promise you it's gonna be me. <laughs> and then Winona, she was like, she was, she was like, Jay. Jade and our other friends, I will write the story and everyone will remember you. We'll be like David Copperfield, but I'm getting away. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was like he called me and he was like, Mom, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And it's like someplace like Jason Bourne would live. Like there's nothing for miles around but animal tracks and snow. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there, I'm glad there, you got a lot of basketball practice and you could really run away. I'm excited for you. Okay, y'all. Right, we, right. we take care of professional things. Professional things now. Back to professional. So my my question is, um, what challenges have you faced? And yep, yep. totally just took it right out your mouth because you went from the beginning of my show. So what challenges have you faced during your career? Well, both, both of you, doing your careers with an S. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Well, we have talk about a few of the challenges that you're going through now. Um, I would like to talk more about how we handle them because like I said, but behind the scenes, a lot of people don't really think that we have a lot of challenges. You know, they see the end results of what we do. Um, but we go through a lot. Like right now, one of the challenges that we're going through, um, which is very similar in the artistic world and the athletic world, is um, when you're dealing with agents and contracts. And um, one of the the worst things about that um, and his profession is he can't be behind closed doors having closed door meetings uh, when these people are discussing his careers. And so he has no, um, there's nothing he can do about that. Um, when, if, if an agent gets upset with you and he decides that he wants to sabotage your career or for some reason, you know, he has a thorn in his side it is very easily done all he has to do is pick up the phone and say a few bad words especially internationally because no one over there knows you all they have is your record so as an athlete he spends his life 
performing training, getting stats, but that can be changed in the blink of an eye just with management. So that's one of the one of the challenges here we're facing lately, if you want to go a little bit more into that. Right. So basically to piggyback off of that, like the my job as an athlete is to to stay in shape and prepare myself for the next upcoming season to help, you know, whatever team I go to, you know, win to have a successful season, you know. So I, I train to stay in shape, um, develop my skills, get better, work on my weaknesses and things. So that's pretty much my focus. And in the sense of where I go as a team, that's what the, an, the agent handles himself. But like I said, whenever an agent is talking with teams or negotiating anything, I'm not there. Like I'm, I'm in a gym or I'm on this side of the world. So like, I don't know what's going on in those meetings. I don't know what's being said. So like I said, if, if an agent is feeling, so like for instance, this, this, the situation that I'm in now, I had to get rid of an agent because I found out that he wasn't legit. So that particular agent, you know, got very salty and, you know, he just wanted to throw dirt on my name because, you know, he's, he found out that because I found out that he wasn't legit. But like I said, when he's conducting those meetings with teams telling you know, bad things about me to sabotage me, I'm not there to defend myself. So whenever I get that feedback from somebody else, I mean, it's at that point, you know, what can I do on this side of the world to prove to them that that's not who I am? Like, he got caught for not being legit, but yet I'm the one who has to suffer. So, like, that's kind of like a... I said, but I mean, it's 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 part of it. I mean, I have to accept it for what it is, and you know, learn from it moving forward. And that you know, when it comes to dealing with these agents, you know, just have to be more thorough with um, you know who I choose to represent me or work with. But like I said it's, it's definitely a learning lesson. But as I said it's it's part of the it's part of the business side of basketball per se. Now, when he says legit, he means um, licensed, because if you're an agent representing, just like we have, you know, literary agents, talent agents, mm -hmm. uh, them as a sports agent to conduct and negotiate um, a contract with the club, you need to be licensed with FIBA. And this particular person, we found out that he was not licensed with FIBA and um, he had made several mistakes on the contract and we kept sending it back saying hey can you correct I mean stuff like the name like get the name right you can't get the name right so we send it back and he sent it back over and and then like the the amounts the the pay schedule and the amounts weren't adding up I'm like is this a typo you know can you correct that and he was like oh it's gone through the club's legal team everything is fine I'm like no it's not fine so like after the second or third time you know, we we're like, okay, look, because he was getting really agitated and pressuring him to sign like within 48 hours. So we started doing some digging. And um, by this time, we had gotten a talent, uh, I mean, a, a business management company to represent Jimmy. So they had a legal team that we were able to give these to. We had signed with this agent before his management company. Um, we had even known about needing a management company so they were very good in helping us to dissect this contract that we kept having to send back to say hey you need to make these simple corrections and the guy was getting agitated but we started doing some digging and um, I even called Switzerland I called Switzerland to FIBA's headquarters and I'm like hey is this guy licensed is he a licensed FIBA agent as he says he is and he was not and so he was a little salty behind that. I guess it was, you know, embarrassment to him, embarrassment to, you know, there, his intent was not to embarrass the club, but it was like, you know, it's not you as this guy. And, but it happens. It happens. It happens even to, you know, smart people. <laughs> you know, we consider ourselves to be smart people, you know, but it, it, it happens. Um, so it's just not. So now with this experience, do you think that with your charity, Jimmy, that you are going to start teaching the business side also of being an athlete? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause, um, I said, of course I'll also be, you know, training them on the court, but I want them to know about the business side of it because that those things aren't being taught. Like, it's like, it's not like as I grew up, somebody was teaching me about the business side of basketball, like everything that's going on now, I'm learning it on the fly. So this, like you said, the, the 
the experience that I'm going through now, the things that I'm learning, I'm going to pass that on to the next generation. So, because I, I wouldn't want to see uh, another athlete, you know, prepare his whole life for this moment and they get taken away because somebody, like I said, wasn't who they say they are. Like that, that's unfair to that person that worked their whole life for that moment. So if I could, you know, use what I learned in this situation to keep somebody else from being in that situation, then yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do. We're actually modeling some of the um, some of the workshops and panels after some of the things we've seen you ladies do because not only do you deal with writing, you also deal with the business side, and you talk about that all the time. You know, writing and the creativity is great, but there's also a business side that you have to know. I mean, well, no, you're ace with budgets. <laughs> Well, Nona, well, Nona will get $50 out of a penny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's a whole business side to, there's a business side to everything. And that's one of the things that we kind of shy away from in the creative area. We love to think about our creativity and our babies. You know, this project is our babies. But we also have to keep in mind that there's a business aspect to everything. And so... Yeah, it's... I think that brings up one of my favorite sayings when we talk about careers, right? Careers indicate money. They don't indicate enough like volunteers. If I wanted to volunteer, I had to be like, I'm not going to do a career. I'm going to volunteer. Mm. Right? When I say a writing yeah. career or a basketball career or like I'm going to be a, in IT, that indicates someone is paying me. <laughs> so right. I can right. my my food to get back to this job. <laughs> That's right. what it indicates. You don't say career. It's like people go, oh, so you're not getting paid at all. No, no one says that. <laughs> no one says that. But yet they say right. it when you talk about writing, or they say it like, oh, you're no longer playing basketball, so you're not getting paid. No, career. Career means payment, mm -hmm. which means we need to know about business because that means payment. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, I've heard the word creativity get tossed around I quite so a bit many yeah. times. Like, no, what I don't understand fully is how creativity has been involved in both of y'all's careers yes. individually. And together because it's the fun, it's the sun, mother page. Yes, it is. So we're um, we we like to say that that our house is a house of this is a house of opportunity. This is the house of one hundred percent get down. Like if you want to be productive, come here. If you can think it, dream it, it it can get done here. Um. So on the creative side, we, I mean, we mesh really well together. Um, we've done so much. Right. We've done right. so much. I broke him into so much. He's an amateur actor, by the way. So when I put, so when I've had to do, yeah, put together. I think it's my fault because I always rope him into like, if we have to do skits and things, I'm always roping him into something. I'm like, hey. Can you be Peter St. <laughs> Peter today? He had the robes up. He's done so much. Oh my goodness. So on the on the creative side, like we 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 just work really well together no matter what it is. Like I think he has the voice of Mr. Henry. What do you think? I was thinking the exact same thing. I think I think Joe might be able to rope you into one more thing. That's exciting for the manager. Who is Mr. Henry? <laughs> you know, son. <laughs> Oh, oh wait, let me tell you. Okay, so so BD and her crew was here filming, and um, he made his debut as as the random neighbor walking with the dog and the coffee. I'm like, hey, would you like to be in this scene? I mean, I'm always roping him into something. I am not an actor. Don't believe nothing that she is saying. Don't so anybody out there listening to this, do not try to offer me. Uh, extra. Okay. He I, was an extra. He a phenomenal extra. And then you can invite Joe, Jade, and Winona to craft services. That's all we need. Yes. Just be crafty. And he uh, make, he comes up with the best slogan. So the next thing we're going to do is, um, because he'd already started his athletic wear line. Um, so that's something we collaborated on with um, his athletic wear. And he comes up with some of the best slogans. So that's the next thing that um, we're going to do is start putting the slogans on his athletic wear and getting that out there. Mm -hmm. um, so are you going to make them for short people too? Because I'll buy some. But, you know, it has to be for short people. Like, short. Very short. Yeah, it, it'll be. <laughs> right. that, we'll buy some dry, we'll 
we'll buy some dresses. Yeah, we'll buy some shirts and we'll call them dresses. We'll call them dresses. We'll be like, yeah, yeah, it, it's a dress. It'll be for everybody. Short, tall. It don't it, it don't matter. Boy, <laughs> girl, it don't matter. I just want to know one so, thing. Are you Jimmy, are you gonna have a fashion show with your actress wear? Because I'm excited for it. Because I'd like you to know. go. You know what? We might have to throw that into the mix. You know what? We can do that. We can do that halftime. You like? You like? You know? We can. Yeah, but we'll we'll do a basketball program. We'll do it at halftime. How about that? But you never seen it. But you never seen a fashion show at halftime. No. And that will work perfectly with your mentoring. This will be great. I love it. I'm gonna be a model. Just joking, y'all. Where can people find out more about you? (laughs) You individual fools. Well, you can find out um, more about um, the show at uh, the Joe Show Podcast um, dot com, and you can follow him on Instagram at J Three Tate. So that's J Three T A T E I G. You can follow well, me I there. Know you just got two new followers. Uh, you, you just have two new followers, and also you can check out Joe's upcoming magazine. Yes, which is yes. being advertised in this month's October Literary Magazine. And I think an oh. IG uh, post right now. Yeah, right now. Oh, well, look at you. So <laughs> I'll go ahead and wrap this up. You can find out, first of all, thank you, my, our guests for coming on today. We really appreciate it. You can find out everything that your ladies are doing at www.andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, take a moment, dial down to the bottom of the page and see the charities that we call to support. Maybe you can support them also. Maybe Jimmy will let us put him up there. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Keep tuned, y'all. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding me and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Will Nona and Jade. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.